uh, PubSub actually become increasingly uh, popular these days uh, because it's a fitness to the applications. If you just think about your pub, your sub, what? Data, right? The producers publish data and the subscribers get the data. And therefore, I think applications really just focus on data. Nobody cares which IP address you actually fetch the data from. It's hard even to figure out which IP address you should fetch from. So today, there's an increasing number of uh, applications built on top of PubSub. Uh, the, the thing hidden beneath the surface is how this actually gets implemented in reality. Uh, I mentioned earlier, today is implemented by centralized servers because you pub, you sub, all about object names, and network doesn't understand the names, and network needs addresses. Now, how you translate the names into addresses, you translate into one address. That's where the pubs and the subs can you know, round the, uh, meet each other. NDN changes that, because NDN brings that concept of name into the forwarding layer. So you throw out your request at the forwarding layer, and the network forwarding routing will make the pub and sub meet each other. So I'm going to explain to you how uh, this, this is done. There's a recent paper, I think we forgot to put in the reference, but we will add that when we, before we uh, put, put this thing uh, out on the web. So examples, you know, the, the random collections of uh, entities, the soldiers, cards, uh, UAVs, in any of them, say, let's make a simple assumption, any of them may produce files, and anyone else might fetch the file, right, depending on their need, uh, depending on their resources availability, and other things. So the objective is that you, the network got the job of delivering all the desired files to all the desired parties. Uh, not everyone needs to get a copy, but someone may need to get a copy, and you don't know who they are, uh, of course, the, the policy control on this, that is, who can have access to the file. Uh, so uh, that is controlled by the security part. And here I'm talking about that, you know, security policy permits how you can get to the desired data to all the uh, wanted parties. This is by the pops up. Uh, say that the UAV somehow captured uh, the, the image and made the file available. Um, in the NDN, the pub, the publisher actually has an easy job. Well, easy in the sense that you, you need to create the, to get the file chopped into packets, and you need to secure the packets, uh, authentication and uh, uh, encryption as needed. Um, then you produce this image file as a collection of data packets. Then uh, the sub, it's like I mentioned, you just throw out your request uh, to the network. You don't have to do the name to address uh, resolution. Uh, you don't need to know which, which node uh, may have it. You don't even know uh, who you might be sending your request to, given that in the battlefield, it's a wireless throughout through your wireless interface. Say, I want this file. Now, uh, the question is when you throw out your request. You have to know the file actually existed. You, you need to know what file is available so you can request for that. So there's this middle piece called the sync synchronization. Uh, that will keep uh, all the nodes informed about what data has been produced so that based on individual's needs, you can decide whether you need to sub, you want to sub, or you don't want to sub. Let's look at the, the three pieces. Uh, first, about uh, the publisher. I said you just make a, a data available locally. Uh, you publish it, put into local storage. We have this concept uh, in the NDN called a uh, repo, data repository. Uh, this is just the application module. Any NDN nodes, in addition to run NFD, the NDN forwarding daemon, you can also run the repo. It, the producer has the data put into the repo, you can just forget it. Uh, this is there available, and whoever wants it can later fetch it. So you, you, you tell the, your local NDN forwarding daemon to say, hey, I have this data available. And therefore, when uh, the request comes in, the forwarding daemon will know, okay, you are the application. 
who have uh, this file named by this uh, request. So this middle part, uh, the sync, essentially got the job uh, to uh, uh, tell everyone, okay, new data gets produced. It can also tell others, you know, what existing data uh, are there, so that there can be late latecomers that uh, you know try to know, okay, what's data available and fetch whatever needed. So what the the sync protocol will do is essentially you need to have a good way uh, to have a compact representation of the names of all the data available, then you just send them out, broadcast out. Um, and uh, like this, uh, this vehicle in the middle, just relate this broadcast, uh, let the end users know about it. And then subscribers, based on their local need, hey, this is a file, do I want it? If so, you send a request. Uh, and of course, it's requested by the wireless, and therefore, uh, if you have multiple, potentially multiple requesters, so you do a little, this is standard technical approach. Whenever you access a, the wireless channel, you do a little delay jittering uh, to avoid multi-parties send the same request uh, simultaneously. Not only that you get a collision, uh, but also a delayed uh, request. So you do a little jittering by the random uh, nature, someone supposedly will send the interest out first, and that will, uh, will uh, deep surprise the, the other parties from sending out the same interest. In the ending terms, that, uh, you know, say the both soldiers <laughs> want to file, they heard the sync to say, oh, the new data, data produced, I want it. You do a little jittering, and uh, the black guy will send the request out first. The blue one will say, okay, I hold the request from my application. Uh, so I created a uh, PID entry, but I haven't sent it out yet. I heard somebody else send it. I just, you know, I don't have to send it. So when the, the data comes back, um, then uh, both soldiers are going to get it. Uh, not only that, say that somehow the data maybe get corrupted, so they didn't get it. Then they're going to retransmit their interest. The NDN also performs this end-to-end -end reliability. That is, the middle nodes don't, don't take responsibility for reliable delivery. All they do is, if they get data packets, they put in the cache if the resource is available. Uh, so if the data packet gets lost between the vehicle and the soldier, the soldier retransmits the, the request, and the request can just hit <coughs> the vehicle and burn uh, the data back to the end users. So in NDN, loss recovery is always local. You recover the loss immediately at the cache before the, the loss points. Uh, that really brings uh, tremendous resiliency into the system. So now I will briefly talk about uh, the sync protocol. This is just a conceptual explanation. Um, I mentioned that we have an ending tutorial website. So in previous years, we explained that uh, in terms of the protocol stack, the sync is kind of equivalent to the transport layer that we have today, like TCP. Um, why we need the transport layer? You say, well, give the reliability. But if you extract the, the essence, transport layer is the following. It fills in the gap. IP performs datagram on reliable delivery best effort, throw it out, and cross your finger, I should, should get there. But if not, well, it's not. But the applications, some, you know, most applications require reliable data delivery, uh, so they cannot fit on top of IP. So there's a gap in the middle. So transport layer essentially is filling the gap between what the application provides, uh, what the application wants, and what the network provides. That's a transport function. So the sync is filling in that, that way. The, the interest in data exchange is also best effort. You throw it out, I hope things will work. But if not, the end holds the responsibility and uh, the sync will do the thing. I use TCP as like today's transport, but it's fundamentally different from the Indian transport. What's the difference? Because TCP is, that's really got an easy job. Uh, it's a point to point delivery. So you talk about, uh, say that if the two ends are the same, 
is the same, it's good, like all high performance. And otherwise, maybe send it a lot faster than the, the receiver. Receiver can do flow control, limit how fast the sender can transmit. Okay. And uh, the sender only needs to take, take care of one receiver. You got it, you, I get your acknowledgement. I, you don't get it, I will retransmit. So that's really easy. When you do this uh, uh, sync, it's essentially that potentially it can be multiple sources and multiple uh, receivers. Uh, things get more challenging quickly. Uh, why is that, uh, that not everyone connected all the time, right? We talk about intermittent connectivity and uh, delay tolerance, disruption tolerance. The second thing is that uh, uh, heterogeneity. I think uh, today during the, the keynote talks is both the breakfast and the, the lunch time. And they really talk about the nodes, it's really different. And also the panel, I think uh, the 1030 panel. They talk about the fast nodes, the slow nodes, um, yeah, especially when you do big data, AI analytics, right? How fast, how slow you should supply the data to the needed user. Um, the different conditions, some nodes running out of a battery, they cannot really do much. And the others really want uh, uh, data with different priorities. So Indian's way is to say that, let the receiver decide. You decide what data you want, and you fetch it. You just send requests, one request, one data packet. Another request, another data packet. So receivers in complete control, what you get and at what speed. Uh, the sync, I want to make it very clear. It's not about I'm going to dump data to you. Instead, I only notify you what data has been produced. So there's really synchronization on the, the names of the data set. That is the whole uh, party of the application uh, would be interested. So here I show you the few things. Uh, so each one just uh, just uh, you know announce it to the rest of the group to say this is the data um, uh, that I know has been produced, either my own data, otherwise I heard about others that produced this much data for this application. So that uh, uh, is the implicit uh, Question is that, does it match what you have? And in reply, one can say that it matches or it doesn't match. You know, for the matches, you slow down your request, your reply for those who, who found the mismatch, they're gonna send reply first and inform other people about the differences. So uh, this is really supported the, the multi-party communications. You don't have to know who whom nearest to you um, in the, uh, once people learned about the data, then they can fetch data from anywhere. So here, um, like I said, the laptop just say, you know, here, here's my data set names. That's including the name of a new file it just produced. Uh, then you do this broadcast, your neighbors will receive it. And uh, say that the second laptop, uh, originally it should be within this broadcast range, but if it moved, then, uh, that a cell phone can relay this uh, knowledge propagation then uh, for this uh, laptop to receive the information at the new location. So how to sync? Um, essentially, you need to find a way to compact the names into a representation. Then you send this so-called uh, sync interest carrying this, uh, this is information about the, the, the data. Uh, then uh, things should work. So for the uh, data set names, we also call data set state. Essentially it says, you know, what's the state that is, what are the names in the shared data set. We recognize that and you need a new transport protocol from day one. So since then we have been trying how to design this uh, transport protocol called SYNC uh, in different approaches, you can interest Whoever interested can look at the, the publication. We have tried many different ways. There's the earlier kernel sync, there's the I sync, uh, partial sync. Uh, the one I'm going to mention in the next few minutes is about the state sync. We think that this is really the, the best fitted for the uh, battlefield where you have you know, short lived connections and the dynamically changing connectivities. So, what uh, 
how does this uh, state vector sync looks like? It's just like the name side, the state vector. Essentially, uh, the state of the data site represented by this uh, list of the raw information, like producer A, this is a, you know, the latest sequence number for the files it produced. The producer B is that the sequence number for the latest file and the producer C, et cetera. Um, yeah, and this is a vector of pairs, and you just put this vector of pairs, uh, attach it to your sync interest, then you just send it out. Uh, the sync interest, you can see, carries the so-called raw data. It's independent from the recipient's state, what uh, information it knows or it doesn't know. Uh, it's not like you take the delta that will have dependency on what the recipient's state is, you, you interpret the delta. But here, it's sent out the raw information. So anyone can receive this immediately notes, do I do you miss any data? Or oh, actually, does the sender miss any data? Because you may have more advanced uh, sequence numbers. Uh, this can get uh, uh, broadcast out, and uh, all the parties may not be simultaneously connected. Uh, you can see that here, the UAV moved into a different location that can carry this newly uh, produced data set state to the other parts of, uh, say, a battlefield. Then, uh, you know, once you know what data has been produced, then the rest will be easier. The sub decides, do I want this file? Yes, send a request. Then uh, you fetch the file from any parties. So summarize, it's very simple. The fundamental difference from today's pop sub is which layer you talk about sub and the pop. Uh, and then just bring that application name directly to the network layer. You run over um, the layer two, over Wi-Fi, over Bluetooth, that we currently already implemented. Uh, it's only across a long distance, say that you want to you know, subscribe to something produced at the UCLA, then how you bridge that long gap. In the, in, in the middle, no node is going to speak in the end. So in that case, we have to transmit, connecting the different uh, NDN nodes by IP tunnels. But otherwise, uh, in the wireless environment, we already have implementation that's run directly over layer two. So the pub, there's a sub, and there's a sync, uh, bridges the information between the pub and the sub. So there's a list of uh, publications if people are interested. There's also code base uh, for people to explore.